This is the first episode of Aging Wheels. And this is a 1995 Grand Marquis. And this is snow. What we have here is a special car. This is not just a Mercury Grand Marquis, it's the Ford Panther platform. Gearheads, jalops, car enthusiasts, and the like all love the Panther platform. And I'm here to find out why. So what is it car enthusiasts like about cars? Well, they should be fun to drive. So we should test that. So test it out, I did. This part of the test is utterly pointless, so I'll make it brief for you. Around these twisty turny roads, the Grand Marquis is nothing short of a terrible sports car, but you already knew that. What you want to know is why it's so bad. Well, it has suspension made from the absolute softest material they could find, steering that feels like it's connected through a piece of yarn, and brakes that feel like they have kitchen sponges for brake pads. And on this particular car, the brake discs were actually warped. But none of this stuff matters in the mighty Ford Panther platform. Let's go over some specs. It has a 4.6 liter V8 up front, which sounds like a lot, but it isn't. It has about 190 horsepower. I think, I'm not sure on this, I think that's about the minimum you could possibly get out of an engine that size. But it doesn't have push rods. This is the new Ford Modular V8 that they introduced in the early 90s, replacing the 5 liter. So it doesn't have push rods. It has overhead camshafts. Ooh. This is 1995 Ford, get with it. Transmission is a four-speed automatic unit. That is, well, it downshifts when it wants to. It upshifts also when it wants to. It likes the first gear a lot. I'll just reach down here and turn on my cruise control. To get to know why a car exists, you have to understand who it was built for. Mercury is kind of the mid-level of the Ford Motor Company. Well, it's not around anymore, but in 1995, it was the mid-level, stuck between Ford and Lincoln. So it's classier than a Ford, but not quite as classy as a Lincoln, which in 1995, the Lincoln Town Car came with a car called Lincoln. This car, it's a luxury car, I guess. It has this wood trim, it is everything that's trying to be classy, except this dash. This dash is very plastic and very clean. And then you have the outside. It's very long, American, boaty, and elegant. The suspension soaks up everything. The steering is very light because it wants you to be relaxed. So look at this. Have a look a corner. The steering. This is so difficult. The engine has very little power because it just it's adequate power. It wants you to surge away on a surge of torque. It doesn't want you to get in any hurry whatsoever. The door quality is absolutely superb in this car. The seats are leather. They're almost bench seats. Not quite. They're like bucket benches. I don't know how to describe this. It has leather, it has nice carpet, it has wood interior. So obviously this car was meant for older people. People that don't want to get in any hurry, don't want to have much stress. So why then, I ask you, does the instrument panel look like this? It matches absolutely nothing else of the car. You've got this big steering wheel that has takes no, no effort whatsoever to move it. You have this gigantic trunk, you have very spacious, very spacious back seats, and then you have this instrument panel, looks like it's something from Knight Rider. I don't understand the purpose of this, this instrument panel, it's like they just pulled it out of a Ford said, yes, this will work great in our new car. Amazingly, this instrument panel has everything I'd ever want except for a tachometer, an oil pressure gauge, and a lot of other useful things. It just has a speedometer, fuel gauge, engine temperature. That, that's good, it has engine temperature. And some other useless computery stuff over here, so they look cool for the 
90. And I'm going exactly 60. I know this because the speedometer tells me I'm going exactly 60, and it never lies. When you look at it, it's telling me. Even the climate control, it's, it's automatic. It's 1995, and I have automatic climate control. I can just hit this button here, and it sets it perfectly to 72. It, it's amazing. Some of the things about this car I like, like look at the seat adjustment levers on the door. Why doesn't anybody else do this? This is so convenient. I don't have to jam my hand down there searching and prodding for buttons. And I don't know what they do. I can judge by the shape what they might do. But no, this is much better. This is much better. Listen to this beep sound. But that's enough fooling around for now. Right, so let's see how big the trunk is. Still plenty of room in here. So the trunk is indeed very massive, but that isn't as surprising once you see how oddly little rear leg room there is. This is the last American boat, and it should be mourned for that. It's rear wheel drive after all, it has a V8. It should be. Some but I'll just stop myself out. there. Objectively, what this car is, is simple. It's a very cheap Luxo barge for luxury car lovers with low standards. But objectivity isn't good enough here. I need to answer my original question. Why do gearheads seem to love the Panther platform so much? Well, it's cheap, it has a V8, and it has rear-wheel drive. But that really doesn't mean much here. What I really think the answer is, is what this car represents. The Crown Victoria, the Lincoln Town Car, the Mercury Grand Marquis, they were all the last of the breed. They were the last big American land boats for sale. Once upon a time, big floated cars defined American transport. So that's it then. This is a car of a bygone era. And for that, the Planther platform will be missed. This road is rutted and terrible, but look at me, I'm comfortable. I am relaxed. <laughs>